What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of Smash JT. Sega has been in the news quite a bit lately. They had announcement of the Sega Game Gear Micro, which I covered in my previous video, and how it's a cool idea, but I feel like they missed the mark with it. They could have made it a little bit bigger, incorporate more games, maybe raise the price a little bit, and just keep it like that. Keep it simple instead of going after the collectors, piecemealing it out, and making it an overcomplicated collect-a-thon to get all these things together. That was the Game Gear Micro. Now the big announcement that was teased a couple weeks ago, people were saying this was going to be like the next big unveiling. People initially thought that Microsoft was going to either buy Sega or use the Sega name for the Series X when they go to sell that in Japan. That was dismissed not being a true situation. What the real thing is that Sega is doing? They're going to move into some arcades. They're going to make arcades data centers. Yeah, data centers. The huge unveiling surprise by Sega is really just boiling down to a tech arcade server technology. Something that they can use the boards, the mainframes from these new age arcades, the GPU and CPU, to assist in creating additional database to use computers overnight when these arcades are not open. Seems good in theory. In Japan, where arcades still exist are extremely prevalent, outside of Japan, arcades kind of went the way of the dodo, and we're not really sure if this is going to be something that could even help anyone outside of the home country that Sega is based in, or Sammy, the parent corporation. So let's break down this announcement. Sega is calling it Fog Gaming, and the technology will essentially turn Japanese arcades into computer server farms. Also known as edge computing, the fog computing introduces additional local node mediators between end users and cloud servers in the process of enabling data to be processed far more efficiently. Now the arcade scene, like I said, is big in Japan, so this is going to be a good thing for Japan. It's not really something that's exciting for the rest of the world, and I think that's where the frustration comes in here. A lot of people were hyping this up based off of the technology journalist Zenji Nishikawa, who reportedly claimed this huge Sega scoop a few weeks ago that was going to be debuting in Famitsu and was going to be on the level of Wired's initial PS5 reveal article back in April 2019, which I covered, and you can see a video, I'll put a link of it above me if you want to watch that. This really isn't that though, and that's what frustrates me about it. This was super hyped up, super like, oh my god, this is going to be game changing for the video game industry. And while it might be game changing for arcades in Japan, it doesn't really have an immediate reaction to the rest of the world. Like, maybe, potentially, if it does catch on in Japan and the data centers are actually making the arcades enough money to sustain business and, and be even more profitable, then potentially it might bring arcades back to the West and maybe that would be a reason to have them open again and I am all for that. But that is a very long time from this moment right now and a lot of things have to go right with the technology that needs to be perfected and put in place and proven before we can get hyped about arcades actually making their way back into play in the United States. But it is something going towards that. It is a move in the right direction for those of us that love going to the arcades. If arcade owners can make the money in the back end by having these used as servers when they close at night, make money overnight, and then open back up in the morning for people to come in and play the games, it's the perfect formula for success for a business to be making money basically 24 hours a day. But it's not going to be cheap. Here's the thing with the technology, the fog gaming that Sega is coming out with. It is not compatible with the current arcades that are out. They need to update and make these new mainframes they have to actually support the software that Sega is making so they need to sell new arcades which is a big price to pay for arcades to take on buying brand new machines and incorporating the technology from it it's going to be a long time before they make their money back with that based off of the new technology that Sega is coming out with right now the system of fog gaming will use the hardware of 
new arcade machines, and Sega is promising very low latency, which is essential for fighting games and shooters that dominate the Japanese arcades. So it's not going to be the typical boards that go into the arcades like we're used to in the past. These are going to be basically, I guess you could say like a Google Stadia type board where it's just streaming technology requiring the internet to be able to play these games with very low latency, at least, like I said, what Sega is promising with them. If that ends up being the case or not, depends on a lot of other factors, but if they are able to make it so that you can play these games and not even notice that they're running through the internet, that could potentially save a lot of money in the long run. Another big issue with this entire situation is because it's going to be, they say it's not cloud gaming, that fog gaming is different somehow from cloud gaming, which is really hard for me to try to grasp with all of this, gets a little bit techy, but the latency would become an issue if the technology were to go outside of Japan because the requirement for the servers to be close proximity to the arcades. That may be something that could be overcome if the technology is migrated to the United States or the UK or worldwide, wherever, but as it stands right now, it's pretty much a non-starter for anywhere outside of Japan, which is why I say it's gonna take a while before this actually comes to fruition worldwide, if it even catches on in Japan in the first place. But that's where I kind of have the issue with the guy initially saying that this was going to be a major scoop on par with the reveal of the PS5 information back when that came through wired last year. This isn't that. This is just talking about a new technology that Sega is rolling out in Japan right now, specifically for arcades there. It's so niche. It's not like everyone can benefit from this. It's not affecting the vast majority of gamers out there. It's specific to just Japan, which is great. But so much has to fall into place for this to even be successful in the first place that I wouldn't say it's on the even the same galaxy as what the PS5 spec information reveal was last year required. So that entire situation really frustrated me. It hyped up people for no reason. People were starting to speculate, is Sega getting back into the console wars? Are they going to come out with the Dreamcast 2? I mean, that was kind of a little bit far-fetched because the finances required to even come out with the console this day and age to compete with what's out there was pretty much beyond feasible with what Sega could do with their financial situation right now. But still, just hearing this announcement, people's brains started going wild with rumors and possibilities and speculation on what it could have been. Ultimately, to me, it's just yet another letdown by Sega, just along with the Game Gear Micros. They're cool, and it's a neat concept, but the actual rolling out and how they're doing it leaves a lot to be desired. And it's it's not something that I personally can benefit from. And the vast majority of gamers really won't be able to relate to this. So yeah, it's it's a little bit frustrating to me that this got hyped up as big as it did. And ultimately it just came out to be a fog gaming technology for arcades specific to Japan that use servers overnight to be able to make money and, and keep the arcades rolling there. Not knocking it, it just doesn't really directly affect most people. So let's try to keep our expectations in check, journalists. Let's not try to hype people up for things that really, ultimately, at the end of the day, aren't that big of a deal when it comes to the video game industry right now. Now, ultimately, maybe this will grow into something wild and be hugely, spectacularly successful. But right now, it's not that. So just the, the hype behind this announcement, I think, is what really got me frustrated about it. Uh, hell, I mean, the Game Gear Micro, the, the thing they announced like before this, where it was just like, oh, by the way, the Game Gear Micro, people thought that was the big announcement, and they were like, oh, that's, that's cool, but it's not really that big of an announcement. It's just a Game Gear Micro. Cool. You, you did it wrong, though. You could have made it so much better. And then people say, that's not the big announcement. Here's the big announcement. Data centers and arcades. I mean, the Game Gear Micro is actually more exciting to me. <laughs> Maybe that's just me, though. Anyways, I'm going to leave the video right there. Be very interested, especially in this situation, to hear what you guys have to say about data centers and arcades. Are you excited about this? Do you see more potential in it than I do right now? Or are you kind of in my camp where this was really blown out of proportion for how important it really is and how exciting it actually is for the video game industry? I am all for it coming to the West and arcades coming back. But that seems like a very long time from this moment right now. 
I'm gonna leave the video right there. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, you stay smashing. Smash, Jay, Jay, Jay. Smash, Jay, Jay. Smash, Jay, Jay.